Hello and welcome to another Actuator Spotlight. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Visibility Actuator. If you haven't seen my introduction video to the series, go and check it out. You can click the annotation to go see that, uh, because I'm going to be assuming that you already know all the stuff that is in that video. So this video is only going to be covering the things specific to the Visibility Actuator. Um, and I started with the Visibility Actuator because it's probably the most basic one, um, the easiest one to kind of grasp. Uh, so let's just get started with everything that's on the Logic Brick itself. So the first option that we have is the Visible checkbox. And this just simply tells it whether the actuator will make the object visible or invisible. And this is the object that the actuator is attached to. So in this case, the cube object. So with it checkmarked, that means it will make the cube object visible. And with it unchecked, that means it will make the cube object invisible. Next to that, we have the occlusion checkbox. And this one sets whether the object will hide other objects that are behind it whenever it's visible. So a check mark means it will use occlusion. The unchecked version means it will not. And I'm not sure whether this is true or not, but the documentation says that this is um, the same as setting the object to the occluder type in the object type selection. So finally, next to that, we have the children checkbox, and that changes whether or not this actuator will affect all of the children objects. Um, all of the objects that are children to the cube object. So if I have this set to not visible, like I do now, and I have children checkmarked, that means this actuator will not only make the cube object invisible, but it will also make any child objects invisible as well. So I have this sort of test scene set up, and I have my main cube object here. That's the one with the actuator attached to it. And then I have this small cube object over here, and this is the child of the larger cube. So if I move the large cube around, the small cube moves around with it. On the large cube, I also have a delay sensor set to a 60 frame delay. Um, so let's see what this actuator does. So I have it set to not visible, and I have children checkmarked. So if I go over the 3D window and hit P to play the game, You'll see after 60 frames, both cubes disappear. However, if I uncheck the children box, you'll see if I play the game, only the parent cube disappears. So that's what that's all about. Also, if I check mark visible, you'll see after 60 frames, cube stays visible. And there's not really a good way I can demonstrate the occlusion. Um, so there's that. Okay, so now we're going to go over into Python and see the different attributes for the actuator. Okay, so here we are in Python, and again, if you haven't checked out my introduction video to the series, make sure you watch it because um, there are a few other attributes that I'm not going to cover in this video um, because those attributes are for all actuators and not just the visibility one. So the first attribute we have is the dot visibility uh, attribute. And that is the same as the visibility checkbox on the sensor itself. So we can both set and read this attribute. So you can see here I'm setting thing one dot visibility equal to false. That means that the actuator will make the object invisible, or that is the same as not having this checkbox checkmarked. You can also read it into a variable. So here I have thing2viz, which is the name of a variable, uh, and I am setting that equal to thing2.visibility. So that's going to give me a Boolean value. The next attribute that we have is .useOcclusion, and Again, this is exactly the same as setting the check mark on the actuator itself. So here we can 
uh, set it so we can use like thing one dot use occlusion equals true so that means I am going to be using occlusion and you can also read that into a property so here I have thing to occlusion equals thing to dot use occlusion we can also use recursion this is the same as clicking the children check mark on the uh, actuator itself so we can both set and read it as well and this is also boolean so we can do something like thing one dot use recursion equals true that means we uh, will affect all of the child objects um, we can also read it into a variable so thing to recursion equals thing to dot use recursion and then down at the bottom we just activate both of those actuators um, again that will be part of the introduction video all right so like I said the visibility actuator is uh, really basic probably the simplest actuator there is so it doesn't have a whole lot to it however hopefully now you kind of understand how each of the videos is going to be formatted um, and maybe that'll make it easier for you to follow anyway that's going to be it for the video on the visibility actuator I hope you will check out the other videos in the series I hope it has helped um, and that's going to be it for today, so thank you guys very much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.